Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Camp Creek Church. It's sure good to see you today, and it looks like uh, you're all here. You set your clocks ahead, and that's good. Good for you. <laughs> you found the, the time, and here we are, and God bless you as you come together to worship the Lord this morning. I welcome those who are joining us online as well. Thank you that you can join us for church today and pray that God will bless your time as we all come together uh, for worship today. I want to remind you again, if you didn't get a bulletin to to grab one of those, a lot of information in there, and I don't want to uh, have to talk about all of those things, so I know you can read that and see what's going on this this week. Uh, But just a couple of reminders. We are having a celebration of life for Doug Sackett this afternoon, and I know many of you here uh, knew Doug and you know Norma and if you're able to be here that would be great we're going to have a reception time with some finger food snacks over in the fellowship hall right after but again that's three o'clock this afternoon right here at church so come on out for that and then Easter choir practices tonight at 5 30 but no youth group this evening we're going to take a break tonight and we'll be back next week another reminder our our uh, neighboring Village Missions Church over in the Mohawk Valley, Mohawk Community Church, is working on a fundraiser. Uh, They found out that their parsonage is pretty much in, how do you say that? Habitable. Can't live in it. Uh, (laughs) Anyway, and so they're working on a fundraiser for a new modular, mobile, uh, modular, you know, uh, parsonage. and so they've got a, a handle on that. And so they're doing some fundraising. And one of those is coming up this week. And I put a note in your uh, bulletin as well as in the email that you received. So if you want to participate, they're doing this at Papa's, but it is the Coburg Road Papa's. So a lot of the things that are done through the school here is through the one uh, out on Main Street. This is the Coburg Road Papa's. It's this Thursday. Anything you purchase there, if you take one of these with you, proceeds, some proceeds go to support the Mohawk Church's fundraising for this new uh, purchase of a parsonage. So these flyers are in the back, on the back table. If we run out, I can copy them really, really quickly. So let me know if you didn't get one today and if you're interested in that. And I know Pastor Sam and Rachel and their family over there say thank you for participating in that if you can. As we begin this morning, we do want to pray for our service here as we continue through the season of Lent and uh, what that means to us. We want to pray for our village missionaries this morning as well as we open our time together. We're praying for Raul and Teresa Corona who serve the Lord down in California, church they've been at for a long time. And they normally go to the California conference, but Shelley and I met them once. They came to Cannon Beach and we were able to sit with them and visit with them a little bit and it was a real a privilege to be with them. They are in a Hispanic congregation down there. I believe that most of their stuff is done in Spanish at that church. And so we just praise the Lord. Well, even the name of the church, as you notice there, is uh, in, in Spanish. And so we just want to pray for them and their ministry uh, down there in California. So let's join together this morning and uh, pray for these, these dear ones as well as our time together as we worship the Lord. Father, it is good to be here today. Lord, I want to thank you for everybody who is present here this morning at church. I want to thank you for those who uh, are home. They couldn't be out today, but they're, they're watching online. We are grateful for that as well. Thank you that we can connect in these different ways and be part of this time of, of worship together. And Lord, as we do come together, we, we do say a prayer for our church over in Mohawk as they're working on this fundraising, Lord. And I just pray that you will uh, just multiply their efforts and provide for them in an amazing way, Lord, uh, raising funds for this new parsonage and getting the family set up in a, a better uh, living situation. And so, Father, we just commit that to you and this particular fundraiser to you uh, coming up this Thursday. Father, we thank you for our Village Missions Church down in Avino, California, and we pray for Pastor Raul and Teresa as they've served there for for many years and continue to serve, Lord, that you will provide them as they're praying for a great harvest of souls in this year. Father, we pray for their youth to follow your word, 
in the middle of a lot of the times that we're living in that are difficult, that they would make choices that would reflect you, Lord, and, and your word. Lord, we, we pray uh, for their family to continue uh, to, to bear fruit, and we praise you for their long service of 30 years there at this church, uh, at this church in California. And so we lift them up to you. We pray for our fruitful ministry. We thank you for your word that goes out from that place each and every day. And then, Father, uh, as always, we like to echo those prayers for our church family right here in Camp Creek. May your word go out from this place through the many different happenings that, that go on uh, each day of the week here, uh, that people will be drawn to you, Father, and that uh, we would definitely make an impact in our community for your glory. And so, Lord, this morning we come, we continue this season of Lent, our focus on what you have done for us on the cross, and, Lord, how today we can draw near that place uh, where you died for us and, and what that means to keep that on our hearts and our minds. So we ask you, Lord, to guide our time this morning. Draw us close to you as we worship you, we pray. In the precious name of Jesus, our Savior, we ask these things. Amen. And our focus this morning for today's uh, Lenten uh, Sunday, it is our third Sunday of Lent, is to be near the cross. And that's, you know, an interesting idea. We want to talk about kind of what that means. We're going to actually look at some characters in the Bible that literally were drawn near the cross where Jesus died. And I realize we can't do that. This is a wonderful cross here, but this is not the cross where Jesus died. And drawing near the cross means more than just me walking up close to the cross. So we want to talk about how we can draw near our Lord this morning, and we know upon that cross His grace was poured out. His love was poured out. And so I pray this morning as we worship the Lord that you'll experience His grace, His love, and His mercy in your life. Will you stand with me and let's begin to worship Him together Amen. this morning. It's so good to be together to celebrate, to worship. Oh, let's open our hearts to Him.
Thank you, thank you. Let's sing of his goodness to us. He is worthy of our praise. Let's sing to him. We love him. Sing it to him. I love you, Lord. All your mercy never fails me. All of my days I've been Sing a new song. 
word says that he inhabits the praises of his people. So we pray today that he will inhabit us, that we will draw close to him, draw close to his, his cross, and be encouraged by being in his presence. So we invite you to be seated as we continue hearing a psalm of praise. Our relationship with Jesus is a source of strength and hope in all circumstances. We become prayer warriors when we trust in him, not just because our prayers are answered, but because he gives us a quiet steadfastness. We can trust that he will always hear us in our prayers and that he is always with us. In today's scripture reading, we'll hear about trust. Three times the people are called to trust, and three times we read about the truth of God, who he is to the people Israel, and who he is to us, our help and our shield. Psalm 115, the third Hallel Psalm. Listen for the word of the Lord. Not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory. Because of your love and faithfulness, why do the nations say, where is their God? Our God is in heaven. He does whatever he pleases. But their idols are silver and gold made by human hands. They have mouths but cannot speak, eyes but cannot see. They have ears but cannot hear, noses but cannot smell. They have hands but cannot feel, feet but cannot walk, nor can they utter a sound with their throats. Those who make them will be like them, and so will all who trust in them. All you Israelites, trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. House of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. You who fear him, trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. The Lord remembers us and will bless us. He will bless his people Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord, small and great alike. May the Lord cause you to flourish, both you and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The highest heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he has given to mankind. It is not the dead who praise the Lord, those who go down to the place of silence. It is we who extol the Lord, both now and forevermore. Praise the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Laura, for sharing that psalm. I don't know if you've noticed in these Hillel psalms how celebratory they are. And I think it's very interesting that they are often used during the period of Lent, which, of course, we celebrate what Jesus did for us, but sometimes kind of a dark time. But in the midst of that darkness, we have these words of celebration. We have these words of trust, these words of praise to the Lord. And so as we pray this morning, uh, again, just sharing with you this time that we're calling cross time every week during the Lenten season, we're going to hear one of those psalms uh, from God's Word, and then I'm going to pray, kind of reflecting on that psalm, and then go into a time where we just have uh, private prayer t together. You can come to the altar if you want and kneel and pray. Uh, we're going to have an opportunity to, if you need something where you need to be prayed for, uh, you, you want to praise the Lord with someone, we want to share those times with you this morning. So feel free to move around. We don't do a lot of that, I know. <laughs> it sometimes takes me a while to say, okay, I'm going to get up and move here and there, but please feel free to do that. Feel free to come and just kneel at, at the altar and feel free to come and, and pray at our, our time at the cross and 
and let the Lord use this time in your life. So let's go into his presence and continue in his presence in prayer. Father, as we come to you this morning, I thank you so much for that psalm of praise that, that Laura shared with us, Psalm 115. It, and it is really celebrating your goodness and trusting you, a call to trust in you, the God who blesses us abundantly. And Father, we realize we live in a world where there are so many things shifting all around us. It's hard to know what to put our trust and our faith in. So Lord, today we heard that call from you to put our trust in you. Not in those idols made by human hands, and not in ourselves, but Lord, to trust in you. And so Lord, at Lent, as we come into your presence and we realize all that you have done for us, Father, all you've done to love us and care for us and to send your son Jesus to die for us. We just want to trust in you more. We want to draw close to you. We, we want to learn from you. We want to be directed by you. And so, Father, this morning as we spend some time together in, in prayer, however we choose to do that, Lord, that you would just draw very close to us and we would sense a nearness through your spirit here today. We realize as we are gathered, your spirit is gathered right here with us. Your presence is here. Touch our hearts and our lives this morning as we worship you.
that this psalm, the old, this old song, it's an old, old hymn, but it was written by Fanny J. Crosby. She wrote a lot of old hymns. You may know that. But it's interesting, that line that says, the third verse where it says, near the cross, Lamb of God, bring its themes before me. She was blind. Mm -hmm. She wrote mm -hmm. all of this poetry and all of it. She was blind. And I thought, how interesting that she would put that there, bring the scenes before me. Yeah. She would never have seen it. So. That's, that's yeah. neat. Yeah, very It's all cool. about our hearts anyway, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right, for sure. May the Lord keep us in that place near his cross, you know, each day for sure. Yes, amen, amen. We do have junior church this morning uh, for our young ones. If you're three years old up through the fifth grade. You are dismissed and can go to junior church today. Have a great time, and we'll see you all back here a little bit later. So, thank you to our team. Nice to have Linda back. Yes, it's wonderful. To, I know they were back last week, but it was fun to come back. <laughs> oh, you find your husband? Yes, yes. There you go. Oh, well, Again, welcome to everybody here. I'm so glad you could be here this morning. It's good to be you know, in the Lord's presence together. It's good to be able to pray with one another, to share with one another, and just to be a part of what God is doing in each other's lives. Just to report another wonderful His Kids on uh, Friday. We had more kids again, like 64, 65. I know, we thought the same thing. Wow. <laughs> Um, eight new kids that hadn't been here before were signed up, and so, uh, praise the Lord, pardon me, some were missing, yeah, so praise God for how he is reaching out into our community with families and kids, and, and we have a little break because we don't have our next His Kids because of spring break, we won't have it until the first part of April, so we get to regroup and get ready for that, that bigger chunk of kids, but thank you all for being so supportive and praying for that. Uh, that program that just continues to be uh, a wonderful outreach in our community. Well, we are uh, on a journey. We're calling it a journey through this Lenten season, uh, 2023. And this journey and the series that we have been working through, we're calling it Crosswalk, uh, a journey with the cross. At, at Lent, we kind of focused on what Jesus did for us, and we know a lot of what he did for us was was on the cross. It's what he, he did there. And of course, after the cross is the resurrection. We're so excited to celebrate that. And you know what? Sometimes, and I don't know, we're, we kind of celebrate during Lent, but I think if you take that Lenten period and really, really dark uh, throughout and you sustain that for the, that period of, of 40 days, by the time Easter's there, you are so glad. You know what I mean? Because it's like you have been in this season of a bit of darkness, this season of considering our sin in light of what Jesus did on the cross, and then Easter Sunday comes in all its brightness and glory, and we proclaim that he is risen. So we, we need to always keep that in view. But during Lent, we're looking at this crosswalk, this journey with the cross, and our focus during Lent has been on some passages. We haven't been looking at one specific section of scripture, but a lot of different scriptures uh, that identify the place of the cross in the Christian's daily walk with God. And so that's kind of our idea. How does the cross play a role in my daily walking with Jesus? You know, how, how does it play a role in that? Um, obviously, you know, it's, not, it's more than just, you know, the, the scene of the cross that's, that's in front of me the cross that appears on our, our steeples and our churches, the crosses that we often wear. It's more than that. How does it play a role in my daily life? That's kind of what we've been looking at. Part one in our series, two weeks ago, some of you were here, some of you might not have been, was called Take Up the Cross. And what we did there, just a little review for you, we were talking about how do we understand true discipleship. This was the lesson where Jesus told his disciples if any, of you, any one of you want to follow after me, if any, any, any one of you want to come after me, he must deny himself. Take up his cross daily 
and follow me. That's that call to discipleship. It's not an easy call. How many of us want to deny ourselves? You know, not many. Normally, we don't. I like to kind of look out for myself. (laughs) But we're to deny ourselves. And then we're to take up that cross, which really means dying to self and follow Jesus. That was part one. Part two was last week. We had a sweet time of communion, a wonderful time around the table of the Lord. And we looked at the cost of the cross. We looked at the cost to Jesus, which most of us know. I mean, he gave his life. He died there on the cross for you and me. He did no wrong, no, committed no sin, was not guilty of anything. And yet he, his life was taken so that we could have new life. The cost cost you the cost. That's a tongue twister. The cross cost Jesus a great deal. It cost him everything to purchase our salvation. And yet we also pay in this cross. There's something that we pay. It's not for our salvation, obviously, but it's that sacrifice of sometimes giving up ourself for the Lord. So that's where we were last week. So today we're going to spend some time in God's Word. So hopefully you you have God's Word there with you, or if you didn't bring a copy. They are in the chairs for you to pull out a copy. Um, We are going to, in this crosswalk today, examine the idea of staying near the cross, like we just were talking about and singing about. Part three of our series, I've just titled it, entitled it simply, Stay Near the Cross. Stay Near the Cross. What does that mean? What we're going to do today is examine Uh, several biblical individuals who stayed near the cross of Jesus, literally, and why they did that, the reasons that they did that. So if you want to take some notes in your bulletin this morning, there's always a spot to jot down some notes there. And so if you'd like to do that, uh, please pull that out and we'll, we'll get going. The first point I want to share with you about staying near the cross, why we do this, you know, how, what are some reasons? Staying near the cross out of duty. So if you have your Bible with you this morning, we're going to be in some different passages. We're beginning in the Gospel of John. So if you have, uh, can turn there with me. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We're in the New Testament in the Gospel section of the Bible. And if you'll go with me to John chapter 19. And like I told you last week, I think I have my real Bible here, and then I have big print here, so I can read it to you without struggling. Anyway, John 19, verses 23 and 24 is what I want to share with you uh, this morning in this section. Staying near the cross out of duty. It says this, when the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took up, or they took his clothes, dividing them into four shares, one for each of them with the undergarment remaining, And this garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. Let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let's decide by lot who will get it. And this happened that the scripture might be fulfilled that said, they divided my clothes among them and they cast lots for my garment. So this is what the soldiers did. To me, this account is a perfect example of duty. These four soldiers were on guard that day, and they were fulfilling their responsibility for staying near the cross. They divided Jesus' clothes. Among them, they threw the dice for the seamless garment. I love how they did that. You know, they were just doing it as part of what they did, but it also also fulfilled Scripture. And that was always a big deal. Certain things were done that maybe seemed odd or unusual or different because it fulfilled Scripture. And that's what happened here. So really, these men, these soldiers, many times the Roman soldiers, I can't judge all of them, obviously, but for the most part, they were hardened folks. They were hardened to their job. And even though this was Jesus, the Messiah, who was was on the cross as they were at the foot of this cross, he was being crucified. Their loyalty, it was not to Jesus. It wasn't. Their their loyalty was, was to the Roman government, their loyalty to, was to their job at that point. So as we think about our lives, I think about mine, you think about yours, and our commitment to the Lord, do we do what we do as a Christian just because we feel that we have a duty to God? Now, this can especially come into play when we think about attending church, 
you know, or volunteering maybe for different opportunities? Do we do it out of love and devotion for Christ and a desire, you know, to serve, to serve Him or simply out of a sense of what we have to? I'm sure that if we're honest, we'll find that it's often both, isn't it? We do love the Lord. We, we want to serve the Lord. But then sometimes, you know, it's, it's what we need to do. It's the duty. It's the thing I'm supposed to do. And um, I'm not saying that all duty is bad by, by any means. Many things get done in life. Many good things get done in life because we dutifully attend to them. And I'm glad we do, you know, because there's a lot of things that would, you know, go by the wayside if we didn't. However, my point here is that I don't believe duty should be our only motivation with the Lord. There's a duty to do certain things for sure, but it shouldn't be our only motivation with him. For these men, these soldiers, there was no commitment to Jesus. There was a duty to the law of the land. There was a duty to their job, and they fulfilled that perfectly. But I don't want us as followers of him to just do it all because it's duty. And that brings us to our next point, and then I want to kind of go, um, balance things out as we look through these different points. Here's another reason that I see that some people stayed near the cross. Staying near the cross out of gratefulness or out of gratitude rather than just duty. Now, we all know, as you read about Jesus, and we read a little bit about Jesus this morning in our adult class at 9 o'clock, in John's Gospel, about when he turned the water into wine. And he was hanging out with the people in the towns and villages. And we know when Jesus did travel into the different towns and villages, because he didn't wait for people to always come to him. Sometimes the crowds would gather. But I think that's also a part of our mission. We have a church, of course, and we call people to come to church. Come on out. Join us. Join us for Christmas. Join us for Easter. Join us on Sunday. It's all well and good. But we also kind of have to get out there, don't we? We have to be out there and, and talk and share and be with the people that are around us. Jesus did that, and he hung out with the people. He ministered to many who were grateful to him for how he had touched their lives. Go with me now to Luke's Gospel. So you're in John. So just go back a little bit to the book of Luke. And we're in Luke 8, verses 1 and 2. Luke 8, verses 1 and 2. give you a moment to get there. This is recording Jesus traveling around a bit and what took place. It says, after this, Jesus traveled about from one town and village to another. That's what he was doing. Uh, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, and also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Mary, called Magdalene, or Mary Magdalene, from whom seven demons had come out. So Mary Magdalene, she's specifically mentioned here as one who had been touched by Jesus. Her life had been changed by Jesus. She had been delivered from these demons, and she had come around to follow Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. And she became an avid supporter uh, of Jesus and his ministry. And then we see later in, in John's Gospel how Mary Magdalene was present at the cross. Just like the soldiers were there, you know, the soldiers were there doing their thing out of duty, Mary Magdalene was also at the foot of the cross, right there close to where Jesus was dying but it was not so much out of a sense of duty. I believe that it was out of a sense of gratitude and gratefulness to Jesus for all that he had done for her that brought her to this place in her life. And then even later, if you go a little further, and you don't have to go there, but in John 20, 28, we see that Mary Magdalene was privileged to announce the resurrection of Jesus. Isn't that incredible? You know, God touched her through Jesus Christ, changed her life, healed her from demon possession, and then there she is at the cross, kneeling where Jesus was dying. And then when he rose, 
he was one of the chief proclaimers <laughs> about the resurrection. She had gratitude in her heart. Now, we've discussed before, and I believe it's so important. I just had a conversation with someone this week about how important gratitude is in life, to be grateful, especially in a Christian life. As a Christian, we have so much to be thankful for. God tells us many times in his word that we need to be thankful no matter what comes our way. The most notable is that one in 1 Thessalonians 5.18. Most of us know it. Give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. In fact, let's just say that together. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Wow, give thanks in all circumstances. It doesn't say give thanks for all, does it? There is a difference. We know there's hard stuff that happens, difficult, horrendous stuff that happens. We're not saying thank you, God, for that horrible, terrible thing that happened to me or my friends, or my family. But we're saying, God, thank you that in the midst of the horrible, terrible, there is a light, there is hope, and that is you. So we give thanks in all circumstances. It's God's will for us. And then I believe it's especially important as Christians to be thankful and grateful to God for all that he's done for us on the cross when he purchased our salvation. 2 Corinthians 9.15 is usually used as a Christmas verse. It says, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Because we know Jesus was born at Christmas time. And he came in the manger. And that is the indescribable gift. But this passage in 2 Corinthians, if you look at the context of it, is talking about salvation. That is the indescribable gift of God. That is what we need to be thankful for, is what he did for us on the cross. Mary Magdalene, I believe, was so grateful to Jesus for all that he had done for her. She stayed near the cross, literally near the cross, where many were running. Disciples were running from that place. They weren't there near the cross. But Mary was so grateful, and she had this devotion to Jesus that she stayed there. May that be true of us as well. So as you think about what can keep you near the cross, what can keep me near the cross, it's gratitude. It's thankfulness to God for what he has done for me, and I want to stay close to his cross. The third point I want to share with you this morning that keeps us near the cross, staying near the cross out of loving commitment. Now, as we think of those, and you know, we read the scriptures that talk about those who were literally near the cross of Christ, Mary, the mother of Jesus, probably tops the list. It's quite a picture that Mary, the, you know, the earthly mother of Jesus Christ, the literal mother of, you know, that Jesus was born to, is there at the cross. Look with me at John 19, 25. I'm going back and forth here in the Gospels. You're getting used to Luke and John. John 19, 25. As we see this crucifixion scene played out, it says this, near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and there we have reference to Mary Magdalene as well. So near the cross of Jesus stood his mother. Uh, Mary stood at the foot of the cross facing the suffering of her son. And Mary must have reflected on all the suffering that she had faced up until this moment, just all the questions, even when she got word that she was going to give birth to the Son of God. Uh, and even if she did understand the message of his resurrection, and I, I think she did, I mean, even if she knew that you know, this was not the end for her son because he said he was going to rise again, even if she fully got all, all of that, to watch your son suffer must have been beyond comprehension. Even knowing, yes, he said he's going to rise again, but in that moment to see what was going on. And it seems that she stood as near as permitted so that he would not have to suffer alone. That is one of the things they say about that death of crucifixion and everything. As much as possible, they tried to make it an alone thing. I mean, it was very public, but they wanted that person on the cross to feel so alone, even in the midst of the crowd that was gathered around to watch. 
I think loving commitment is probably one of the best reasons to keep us near the cross. You know, think in your own life. You know, you love Jesus. Jesus died for you. And you say, I, I want to stay near him and, and focus on what he wants for me because of my love for him. So as we realize all that God has done for us through, our, our commit, uh, through Jesus, then our commitment to him and our love for him grows. And I think that is something that we should, we should be cognizant of or aware of. Is my relationship with Jesus growing? Things tend to stagnate. It's very easy to get to a point and say, I've kind of arrived here. I'm pretty comfortable at this distance between the cross right now. I like it here. It's good. <laughs> it works for me. I think we always should be considering, how can I grow closer to the cross? So, as I move a little closer, some things become a little more uncomfortable. Maybe my sin shows up a little more. And the fact that I can't do it myself is, is there even more, and I, I have to cling to that cross. I think it needs to be a growing relationship. Don't get to the spot where you say, I'm okay, I'm good. <laughs> I don't need to grow anymore. I don't need to move any closer to Jesus but to move close because you love him so much. The last one I want to talk to you about today, staying near the cross, full devotion. Because we have a, we're devoted to him. It's interesting to me uh, that scripture records only one disciple near the cross of Jesus. I, I just think that's so interesting because, you know, those men were close. Jesus taught them so many intimate things. They got in on so much more than the other people around them. And yet here we have record. This is in John 19. Just look down a couple of verses. John 19, 26 and 27. It says here, when Jesus saw his mother there, Jesus is aware that his mother is there, and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, who is, who is John, the disciple whom Jesus loved is, is John, here is your mother. And from that time on, this disciple took her into his home. And it's interesting, woman is a term of endearment in this situation. It's the same, we read it this morning, in, in the, the uh, turning the water into wine. When Jesus' mother says that they're running out of wine, <laughs> can you kind of help out here? Um, and Jesus looked at her and said, woman, this isn't my time. But then he went ahead and he did the miracle. But he wasn't being derogatory by calling her woman. You know, so in our culture, we'd be like, why would he call his mother woman? You know, <laughs> last thing you'd probably do. It was a term of endearment. It was love. There was, there was definitely the care there. And so Jesus looks down from the cross, and who's there at the cross with these ladies? The ladies, that's, that made, the ladies that were there, one guy, <laughs> was John. John was there. And, 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 and because John was, was there, Jesus entrusted the care of his mother to, to him. Um, and I, I think that's so important. John was standing near the cross. And sometimes he would be at a distance, but here he was close. And because of his closeness to the cross and Jesus seeing him there, he entrusted John with one of the greatest responsibilities Jesus could ever give, and that was the care of his mother. John's heart of love and devotion was evident here. And so I believe, as we think about being a fully devoted follower of Jesus, that is what Jesus was calling for when he reached out to all of those who would become his earthly disciples. And I believe that's what he's calling for, for each one of us today, to be a fully devoted follower, not just a, a half-hearted follower, but one who's fully devoted to him. Um, that's what he's calling us to, I believe. It, it is what he's, he's calling for us in our lives today. As, as Jesus entrusted the care of his mother to John, I think in a similar way, he entrusts the care and the sharing of the gospel message to us. And I think that's so important. 
And I pray that we will be fully devoted to Jesus and to sharing his message of love to those around us. And we know as he gives out the Great Commission, he tells us to go into all the world to preach that gospel as fully devoted followers of him. So as we this morning examine these, these different individuals in the Bible, they were all drawn to stay literally near the cross, right there at the foot of the cross. They were drawn there for different reasons. There was duty. We looked at that. The guards. There was gratefulness. Mary Magdalene. She just could not be there because she's so grateful for what Jesus had done in delivering her. The loving commitment of his mother, Mary, brought her to that cross to not leave. And the full, devo full devotion of the Apostle John, the only disciple that was there present right there at the cross. So as you look at that today, duty, gratefulness, loving commitment, full devotion, what are your reasons? What are my reasons? Probably a combination of all of these. You know, I, I could see that. Um, and as we conclude this morning, I want to encourage all of us to live near the cross. That's our challenge today. And I believe that the nearer we are to the cross in our minds and our hearts, the closer we are to a place of victory in our daily lives. So I want to leave you with just some thoughts to consider that might help all of us stay near the cross. And if you want to jot down those key words as we close, I encourage you to do that. Stay near the cross. For it was at the cross that these things happened. Jesus was punished that we might be forgiven. That's a big deal. Jesus went through all the torture and agony of that cross for something that he did not do, but it's so that we could be forgiven, that I could be forgiven. Jesus was wounded that we might be healed. And I've got the references on your outline, so you don't have to try to jot all of those down. Look them up later. Jesus was wounded that we can receive that healing that he has for all of us. Jesus suffered death that we might be given new life. I think you're noticing that these are great exchanges. Jesus took our poverty that we might have abundance. I love that when I looked up that one specifically. I went to say, what? I can't remember. What does 2 Corinthians 8 9 say? Look those up later. Jesus took our poverty that we might have abundance. Jesus took our rejection that we might receive the Father's acceptance. You know, that's a big one that people deal with today. They feel rejected. They don't feel accepted by anyone. They don't feel loved or cared for by anyone. To realize that, that the rejection that we may feel, Jesus took that, and then we're accepted. Uh, by the Father. And again, the references are there for you to look those up. And then the last one that I have on your sheet is Jesus was made a curse that we might enter into blessing. Pause and reflect on these mighty transformational exchanges. I invite our team to come up, and as they come up, I want you to just think, how might these apply in your life? How might they apply in mine? And then one last verse to look at. The Apostle Paul underscored the power of the cross when he said in Galatians 6.14, May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. And isn't that the truth? To, to not boast in anything that we have done, but in the cross of Christ. To boast in what Jesus has done for you and me. So this morning... As we close our time, uh, as we let's just, if you'll just bow with me for a moment, let's bow together. And let's consider how we might stay near his cross, even as we go forth into this new week ahead. Father, <clears throat> we thank you for what we looked at today in your word, just all the different characters or biblical uh, individuals mentioned in your word that actually were right there at the cross when your son, the Lord Jesus, died, and the reasons they were there. And Father, we know we're not talking about standing up next to a cross where someone's dying, but we're talking about how we can be drawn near to your way of living. 
to draw, draw near to how you ask us to live our lives today in light of the cross. How can we every day take a glimpse at your sacrifice and live our lives differently because of what you have done for us? So, Lord, challenge us with that as we go forth today. And, Lord, help us, help us stay near your cross, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together as we close out one last verse on that. Jesus, keep me near to the cross. Let's start with the chorus. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever, till my raptured soul shall find rest. focus that as we, we keep our minds and our hearts upon the cross of Christ, it goes beyond his death there, doesn't it? It goes to his resurrection, and then it goes to our hope of glory one day. I love that. And so that's where we go. As you keep your mind and your hearts upon the cross, it's not just focusing on that agony of Jesus there. It's that, but it's beyond and what that points to. And I love that. Please receive this blessing today as you go forth. As you go out today, may you walk each day near the cross of Jesus. In all you do and in how you live, may the cross be your guide. This we ask in the powerful and the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have an awesome week. <laughs>